Pablo Picasso said that there is only one way to look at things until someone shows them how to look at them with different eyes. Society looks at disabled people in a manner that focuses on their disability until someone shows them how to look at them as individuals. I am disabled. Born deaf, I have lived my 60 years in a hearing world. To communicate, I lip read. My disability is invisible until I mention it. Oftentimes, people will subconsciously change their opinion of my value when they learn I am deaf. Society judges the value of the disabled. We are often seen as a burden rather than contributors to the community, and that must change. We must recognize people's contributions, give people the tools they need to make those contributions, and celebrate the value that each of those contributions holds. When we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, that's what we're talking about. Joining me virtually to discuss this further are two speakers who are strong proponents of diversity, equity, and inclusion. From India, please welcome 2022 training leader, Rekha Shetty. And tuning in from Minnesota, USA, please welcome District Governor-elect Lloyd Campbell. So Lloyd, let's start more broadly. What does diversity in Rotary mean to you when you think about your Rotary experiences? Well, Mark, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share my Rotary experience uh, to you. You know, when I think about Rotary and diversity, one word comes to mind, and that's courage. You see, at one of my first Rotary District conferences, I had the opportunity to attend. Um, I was at a table with five people. I extended my hand, introduced myself to everyone. And then there was one Rotarian who just happened to be an officer of a club, looked at me and said, I didn't deserve to be there. Now, we live in a country where speech is protected, but that what he said didn't shock me. But when I looked around the table and looked at the faces of the, of the Rotarians who were sitting there, there was no shock. They did not have the courage to stand up and say, this is not my Rotary. So for me, diversity means courage because Rotary has a, a hundred plus years of experience where they have actually have diversity as part of their core message, their core message. So that's extremely important that uh, we have the courage to stand up for diversity. Thank you, Lloyd. It's true that diversity is the core value of Rotary. As you pointed out, we will only achieve diversity, equity, and inclusion in our organization if we have the courage to speak up and take a stand for those values. We need to do what we can do to overcome subtle tactics for passing over highly qualified people for leadership. And Rekha, what is to be gained by providing additional support and resources to make sure everyone has the potential to achieve the same results? Rotary provides resources to help everyone achieve their highest levels of excellence. In the year 1989, the Rotary Club of Madras Temple City was chartered, and I was its charter president. And we decided right away that 50% of our membership should be men. 50-50, and three decades later, we still follow that rule. And we have equal number of women and men presidents. And just last year, we had a hearing impaired president who broke every record, including contributions to foundation. I have founded a company which advises CEOs and top management on innovation. And research proves that innovation, out of the box thinking, comes only with diversity and Rotary provides not only diversity, but the equity through committee structures, through mentoring, through our global network to provide the right opportunities for anyone to achieve the highest levels of excellence. Rekha, good point. That's wonderful. In my own experience as a person with a disability, 
I've seen Rotary Club launch programs and raise millions of dollars to help disabled children and young adults, those with polio, deaf, blind, and wheelchair users, as well as those with service animals. This is altruism at its best. Altruism is great, but when it turns into pity or tokenism, it can be corrosive. It's the greatest barrier that the disabled face in their quest to live normal, full, and rich lives like the rest of us. So, Rekha, I'd like to direct this question back to you. What is tokenism, and how can members avoid it in their DEI efforts? Each one of us as leaders should avoid symbolic appointments. Choosing people who are nearby, close to us, whom we know well, within our comfort level, we need to find the right person with the right experience, with the pra right practical attitude to achieve the goal. The year was 1907. The girl was 17 years old. She died at childbirth, bleeding to death, leaving behind a premature child. That child was my grandmother. As far as maternal and child health issues are concerned, I have life experience that has stood me in good stead, has created the experience for me, along with the Rotary Action Group for Maternal and Child Health, to create the Big Pink Network, which helps women to look at an umbrella plan, bringing help from womb to tomb. I think someone with actual hands-on experience is needed. Each one of us would not be easy to find. We would be like gems at the bottom of the ocean. But we have to search, not look for easy options. Provide the opportunity for the right person to do the right job. Because let me tell you that every bouquet is made up of many flowers. A rainbow cannot be made up of a few colors. And the whole world is waiting for Rotary to turn its way. Rekha, important comment. And Lloyd, if we're thinking about what it means to effectively offer support and avoid tokenism, as Rekha just said, then how can fellow Rotary members, and non-members for that matter, be effective allies? You know, I think Rekha sort of nailed it. It's extremely important that we have the right people in the right place. The key component here is that how you find those people. And it's, it's interesting. I think Rotary International so it has given us the key to that in their four strategic initiatives. And the one being reach out into the community. It's extremely important that we reach out into the community, collaborate with different organizations, and we can find the right people for the right job. So, Mark, thank you very much for taking time to uh, give me that question. Thank you. Thank you, Lloyd and Reka. It's been great to talk with you, and I'm glad you could zoom in and join us. Now, before we close this segment, I would like to say I am a Rotarian, an honorary member of the Rotary Club of World Disability Advocacy. I went to school. I married Valerie and had a family with two wonderful daughters. I built a successful business. I am a motorsports champion, and I'm now an activist and global keynote speaker. I am indeed typical of a disabled person, someone who can contribute greatly to your Rotary Club. Amongst other attributes, people with disabilities have significantly different problem-solving skills as a matter of necessity. And as a deaf man, I have a set of skills none of you have. These different problem-solving skills are how innovation is created. By including people who think differently who solve problems differently in normal daily tasks. Rotary and Rotary clubs cannot afford to ignore these people. These differences are what make us stronger. They are what make us adaptable, and they are how people connect with us. You are the faces and voices that new members see and hear when they look to join us in service and membership. I urge you to commit to diversity equity and inclusion in your own club to see how transformative it can be. 
that it changed my life, I know it can change yours too. Thank you.